I'm happy to introduce our la last speaker performer of the day. Um, so it all started when young Robert, Robert Strong visited Baltimore. A magician in the amphitheater mesmerized him. At that moment, Robert vowed to be the best magician ever. His parents considered therapy, but magic lessons were cheaper. <laughs> Robert continued training at Tennant's Magic School in New York and Towson University in Maryland. He then studied with touring stand-up comedians, Cirque du Soleil choreographers, Ringling Brothers circus clowns, Broadway directors, and world-class jugglers. Since 1985, he has been traveling the world, entertaining audiences large and small, young and old, formal and casual, and everything in between. Robert has starred in a starred in number of national television commercials and made appearances on every major network. Wherever Robert goes, he still carries that sense of wonder and passion for magic that he first experienced as a youngster in Baltimore, but now he is the one doing the entertaining. Robert Strong, the comedy magician. You jumped out of your seat just a little. <laughs> Try the decaf. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Strong. It's an honor to be here today. I've got a couple illusions up my sleeve today, so to speak. And I'd like to start by asking every person in the audience to think of a playing card. Now, some people think I might have influenced your choice by the drawing, maybe something in the introduction, maybe by my body language. So start going through cards don't take your first choice. When you're ready, stop. So everybody's gonna have a random card in their mind. May I get some house lights, please? And let's find ourselves a volunteer. Uh, let's get um, a couple of you on the end. Yes, dodging my gaze. Okay, we'll go to the guy in front of you. Okay, sir in the blue, did you think of a card? In a moment, everyone, I may ask you what your card is. Keep it in mind when you come up on stage. A big round of applause for this gentleman. He's got this card. Card upside down in the deck. All the cards are face up, but one single card. Will you verify that there is only one card? I guess right there it is. There is only one card upside down. Would you verify that? Would you? And please tell everybody what card you are thinking of. Ace of hearts. Look at the card. It's the ace of hearts. <laughs> Joel, everyone, thank you, sir. Watch your step. I'd like to get two volunteers from the audience for this next little demonstration. Can I, can I get, oh, fast on the house lights. Nicely done. Uh, this is where everybody avoids eye contact. This is great. <laughs> you, sir, up on stage. Let's get someone from this side so you don't think anything was arranged or pre coordinated. He said he would be here. Uh, you, sir, would you be volunteer number two? A big round of applause for my two volunteers, everyone. <laughs> sir, what is your name? Wayne. Wayne, and what is your name? Sean. Wayne and Sean, have we met before? No. Come a little bit closer. I am going to do a, you can put that down right there. We're going to do a magic trick, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I am going to tell you how the magic trick works. Okay? A purple handkerchief is going to go up one of my two sleeves. So your job is to watch my left sleeve, and your job is to watch my right sleeve. Audience, you watch both sleeves. Come a little bit closer so you can see. And come open it up a little bit so the people on the sides can see too. Yes, perfect, perfect. Watch really closely. I take the purple hanky, I place it into my left hand. Did you notice how beautiful the whole, that was misdirection. <laughs> As focus, wow, yeah, I see that. I say the magic word, it disappear. Now, did you see it go up this? the sleeve. It was the sleeve. You got to really focus over there, okay? 
We're going to do it again to make it infinitely more difficult. Would you close off my sleeve with both your hands? Stretch your arms out, yes? Wrap around my sleeve. You do the same on the other side. You watch this sleeve this time. You watch this sleeve. Audience, you watch both sleeves. Sleeve. Did you feel good that sleeve? You can let go, you can let go. It actually went up this sleeve, kind of weird, but you weren't paying attention. The short sleeve guy right there, this is. You really have to focus here. A big round of applause for this volunteer. You're gonna have a seat, good job. Now, he may have felt it go up his sleeve. I want you to have that opportunity, okay? Would you please hold out your left hand? This hand, yes, nicely done. Good. What you're gonna do is you're gonna ball it up in this hand so nobody sees it. Close your hand, close, close, close. Don't cheat and use that hand. Turn your hand over, you've got like a death grip. Work with me, it's just a trick, okay? And on three, it's gonna go up one of your sleeves. On three, you turn your hand over and it'll be gone from one of your sleeves. Ready, one, two, three, open. No, it didn't work. That's okay, I can't repair. Instead, I'm going to shackle you up and see how long it takes you to escape. This is where the party gets good. These are European shackles. The same shackles they still use in Europe nowadays. <coughs> Bullshit. <laughs> what European shackles are an eight inch ring with four chains, two locks, and a key. You hold onto this key, Wade. I'm sorry, I said key. You hold onto that lock, Wade. Go onto this lock, Wade. And Wade, I'll place the key right over here. Wade, would you lock my right hand in there? What do you do for a living, Wade? Retired. Retired. What did you do? He's a locksmith. He moved, he's a locksmith, thanks. <laughs> moved papers across the desk. We do the same thing, but on the other side. Very good, Wade, but stay away from my watch. <laughs> Some of the jokes are just for me, Wade. Yeah, I think they were tangled, that's good. Once you lock the lock, pull on it, make sure it did indeed lock. Now, this is an escape illusion, like what Houdini used to many years ago. Wade, once you lock the lock, pull on it. I'd like you to face the audience. Keep facing the audience, but step to the left side. I'll move to the right side. Perfect. Now, wait, I want you to make sure I am indeed still locked in there, yes? Yep. In the back of the room should be a great big clock. Do you see the clock? <laughs> no? Use your watch. <laughs> Welcome to Oakland. <laughs> we make sure I am still locked in there, Wade, yes? Does your watch have a second hand? Hold up in the light so I can see it. When the second hand gets to 12, you say go. So we've got 55 seconds. Wait, I'm still locked in there, yes? My hands are turning blue. You're going to do a countdown from 10, but first I want you to hold on to the key, make sure I cannot get to it, okay, wait. I want you to indeed make sure I am still locked, the hands are turning blue, yes? In a loud voice, you're going to say go, and I'll start to get out of these shackles, wait. So we've got how many seconds? Four, three, two, one, go. Okay, good. A big round of applause for Wade, everyone. Good job, sir. Watch the step. And here's your uh, pencil and paper. Now, we are in a room of very, very intelligent people. We're all skeptics. Yes, and I just wanted to do that demonstration to show how easy it is to take the focus away from where it should be to someplace else, because even the smartest people, often it is the smartest people who are fooled. With that in mind, I want to tell you a little story. I've been doing magic since I was 12 years old, and uh, Every time I finish a show, people would tell me about experiences that they had that were out of this world experiences, ghostly experiences. Astrologers, palm readers, tarot card readers, fortune tellers, future people, people who made predictions, people who could read your mind. And I kept saying, no, 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 those are tricks. And they say, well, what you do are tricks, but other people really, really do that, right? No, 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 those are tricks. And so um, it started to piss me off. <laughs> that these people would not let go, they would bite down on that idea that people have intuition, that they have special powers. Just because we can't measure it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. All these really, really great arguments. So what I decided to do was take the next few years of my career and really focus on how these people con, scam, fool people. Sometimes they're fooling themselves. And I've studied these methods, and for the next part of the show, I'm going to use those methods to create the illusion that I can predict the future, read your minds, tell you your fortune. Let's get it going. Uh, uh, this lady, uh, one, two, three, four, maybe four or five rows. Um, yes, you stand up. Would you come on up here and help me out? A big round of applause for my volunteer. Watch your step. What is your name? Karen. Karen. I want you to think of something, Karen, that I couldn't possibly know. In your lifetime, have you ever had cats or dogs? Yes. Yes, I want you to think of a name of a first cat or dog or favorite cat or dog, and you can be sneaky. You can use a neighbor's cat or dog or one from a store. 
once you have one, lock in your mind. And I'm gonna have you write it nice and big on this post-it note, okay? Write it big enough because in a few minutes we're gonna show it to everyone. But for now, it's a secret. Take a step anywhere on the stage. I want you to write, make sure nobody's looking over your shoulder, nobody's looking at the back of your pen. There's no um, ear thing in my ear and there's somebody whispering to me through a, um, an RF thing. Um, there's no reflections, there's no closed circuit television. Once you write it, I'd like you to just go and close that wallet and I'll place the black rubber band around the wallet, closing it up the rest of the way. Let me know when her pen is closed and the, uh, it's done? Oh, come on over here, good. I'm gonna place this around the wallet. That's a Sharpie, would you open that up? Take a great big sniff. That's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, woo! <laughs> You can close it. <laughs> There's no drug testing at Skeptic Al, I hope. <laughs> would you hold out your uh, right hand? So we're gonna place the wallet in your hand. Would you place your other hand on top? I am now going to read your mind. Would you step into the center of the stage with me? That way you can get everyone's focused energy right to where you were, yes, right where we are here. I'd like you to breathe. I'd like you to concentrate. I may need your help a little bit, but I am getting the image that this is a dog, am I correct? Boom, it's, it's a male dog, yeah. a big dog. Yeah. Yes, okay, focus. Uh, I, I, for some reason, I'm getting the letter L. Is there a letter L in the name? Yeah. Okay, there's, I'm getting one syllable, but I get the feeling that you don't call this dog this one syllable name. You've got a version of this kind of like a cutesy name, like a, an IE or EE or Y at the end, kind of like a, a loving name, but that's two syllables, but you're focusing on the one syllable. There's an F sound or a PH sound. I'm getting an A, I'm getting an R, that's not the order, it's R-A-L-P-H, Ralph, is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> wow. that. Now that is reading one person's mind. I would now like to read all of your minds. <laughs> yes. Um, someone's favorite number is seven, am I correct? <laughs> I have passed out these little index cards and pencils. You can use your own pens if you want, but I'd like you to use the index card. If you didn't get one, I look around, people may have passed them. I put the extra ones on this little table here. Um, on this index card, you're gonna write a couple things. Write it nice and big in block letters because we're gonna show it to everyone at the end. But at the beginning, at the top, I'd like you to write your name. Your first name is good enough. Second row, I'd like you to write a question you like to ask the universe, a real question that's personal to you. Don't try to be a smart ass. We've got a lot of skeptics. I've done this before. There's always often a lot of smart ass questions. A real question that is personal to you that you would like to ask the universe, if the universe could give you a real answer, if that were possible, what question would you ask it? Don't think about it too long. The first thing that pops in your mind is the easiest for me to read. Third, at the bottom, I'd like you to write a number. Stop. The first number that pops in your head. Don't overthink it. So let's review. At the top, you write your name. In the middle, you write a question you'd like to ask the universe, something that's personal to you, and at the bottom, you write a number. Stop the first number that pops in your head. Turn it face down so nobody sees it. You know what's on that piece of paper. I see a lot of people looking at me that are not doing it. <laughs> it's easier for me to read your mind if you believe and you write. <laughs> Once you place it face down, like everybody to pass them face down to the center aisle. Do we have a police officer, someone who uh, served us in the military? Do we have uh, an official? Who do we have? Sorry. A police officer? Yeah. Are you here, sir? Yeah. Or a lady? Yeah. Where are you? Would you stand up, officer? Would you come up here and help me out? Of course you would love to. Sir, what is your name? Spencer. Spencer, what, what do you do for a living? You want to come here, but you were a police officer? Excellent. You are going to be security. You're going to collect them down the center aisle. Everybody pass them to Spencer. And I am getting a feeling from this lady in the second row. Um, yes, you. Kind of uh, getting a connection to you. Would you come up here on stage? I get the feeling that maybe in a past life we've met. <laughs> what is your name? That is correct. <laughs> Anna, come up on stage, watch the bowling ball. Place your hands just like this facing me. Push them away from your body. In a moment, I'm going to touch you very gently on your hands. I want you to count how many times you feel a touch. Not out loud, to yourself. You're gonna do this with your eyes closed, but not yet, not yet. Audience, I want you to watch very closely and see how many times I actually touch Anna's hands. Not come close, but touch. Don't count that loud, count yourself. <sighs> Breathe, close your eyes, all the way close. Audience, you start counting. Open your eyes. Not wind, not air, not breath from my mouth, but a gentle touch on your hands. How many did you feel? Did you say eight? You said eight. How many did you see? 
We've got that connection I need. You are perfect. Uh, Spencer, bring that, uh, before you come up on stage, give it a shuffle, a really good shuffle. Keep them face down so not even you see them. Anna, I'm going to uh, get a notebook out, and we're going to try a little test to see if we have that mental connection. Uh, Spencer, you can do it quickly. Yeah, that's good. Come on up here. And big round of applause for Anna and Spencer, please. Come on up here, Spencer. I thank you for your service. I'm gonna ask you to stand to my right side. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, that was you, Anna. Spencer's gonna stand to my right side. Spencer, from 10 different places, grab 10 of them as quickly as you can. Anna, make sure I can't see through this folio, okay? I will look at you, you make sure that I can't see through it. <laughs> make a nice little pile in the uh, center, Spencer, let me know when there's 10. <laughs> it's a lot of trust, huh? <coughs> Quicker, Spencer. <laughs> It's okay if it's off by one or two. I know it's a lot of pressure. What does your company do, Spencer? Uh, electronics. Electronics, oh, okay. Is it done? Is that 10? Oh. oh, you don't have to count. That's fine, we'll, we'll just go with it, okay? You don't know what any of them are? Grab one, just grab one. Whichever one's speaking to you. Okay, read it, don't let me see it. Put the rest in the bin. Put the other nine in the bin so that I don't see any of them, I don't touch any of them. Close the bin, put the bin on the floor. A big round of applause for Spencer. Take a seat, thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, Anna, concentrate on the name, then concentrate on the uh, question to the universe, then concentrate on the number. We'll start with the name. I'm getting a, a short name, I'm getting two letters. It's a curved line and a short line. It's either an S or a C, or a C or an I, or an I and a C. So the name is C or Psy, is that correct? Okay, I'm getting, the, I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> okay, um, let's move on. The, it's kind of right? It is two strokes. Two strokes. Okay, uh, let's move on. Okay, the uh, next thing I'm getting is the question to the universe. This person is moving in a direction, maybe the other direction, if I'm looking at a globe. Um, this person is moving this direction. This person is moving. There's an airplane, because it's not something you can drive to. I'm getting luggage. I'm getting a lot of luggage. I'm getting like the whole house, but not the actual house of stuff inside the house. Is this making sense to you, yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay. This person is moving to an island. Uh, it's it's, it's a either not specific island or it's specific but not specific enough. It's maybe a bunch of islands, so I'm gonna go with Hawaii, is that correct? Yep. That is correct. Um, the number, fold it up so I can't possibly see the number. Concentrate the number, say it over and over again with your head so that I can actually hear it in my head. Good, okay, don't let me see it. I have here a great big notebook and I'm going to write down what's coming into my head. Audience, try not to think of numbers right now because I am going to try to read only Anna's mind. <laughs> okay, Anna, got it, got it, got it, okay, got it, 13, 10, 7, 12, 8, 11, 14, 9, 10, 5, 12, 15, 11, 16, 9, and 6, your number that you were thinking of is a 12, am I correct? It's a 11 or 12 or 10, am I correct? Am I close? I guess that's relative, okay. Um, <laughs> this is important, ball it up into a tiny little ball. Don't let anybody see it. Keep saying that number over and over again in your head. Have a seat, I will not finish this routine without getting it absolutely correct. A big round of applause for Anna, everyone. <laughs> okay, the force is strong. I'd like to read everybody's mind right now. If you wrote something down and you want me to do, uh, read your mind, convert it to pictures in your mind. That's how I see things, so I need you to uncross your legs. Uncross your arms, put your feet flat on the ground. I want you to ground yourself. I want you to point your toes directly to me and place your hands on your lap. And I am starting to get... Let's see, what am I getting? I'm getting... From this area over here. Uh, a mark name and a number seven. There's another seven. No, it's a 27. It's not Mark, it's a common name. It's David. David 27. Stand up, David. David, if you, yes, yeah, oh, not there. Okay, focus. I'm getting an REI, does that mean something to you? Uh, no. Stay standing, stay standing. Okay, um, REI4, does that mean something to somebody? Oh, is your name Ray? Yeah. Okay. Did I get the number correct? You are the type of person who likes to challenge everything, but you also live in your imagination. This is something from your childhood. You are, you have optimism about the future because of these people. 
They're not real, but you wish they were? Does that mean something to you? If you feel that I got it accurately, go ahead and sit down. Okay. David, you're a stump. I'm getting number uh, five. Stay standing, David. And a K name, it's K-A-R-E-M, K-O-R-E-M, K-O-R-A-M. K. There's a lot of ways that people misspell it. Um, is, there, is that person here, Karem? Number five, stand, okay, good. Oh, were you the person that was up here just a minute ago? Okay. And five was your number? Yes. The answer to your question is that a lot of people around you exhibit this more than it makes you comfortable. So you wanna understand it, right? And what it is, it actually lives inside the brain, okay? It's evolved into humans over lots of years because if they didn't have it, they would stress out too much. They wouldn't know if the sun would come up the next day, so they have to have it. Does that make sense to your question? If it does, sit down. <coughs> your question, David, is esoteric, and I think that's why I'm having trouble. I'm gonna answer it in kind of a puzzle. Is that okay? People, hundreds of years from now, thousands, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. <laughs> I get the feeling you have to use the restroom. <laughs> People hundreds and thousands of years from now are gonna be creating symbols. Are you familiar with what symbols are? Yeah? Symbols, you Symbols. Sim worlds. Um, oh, yes. Yes. Sim yeah. And in those symbols, the processing power, the memory that these computers are gonna have to be really, really powerful so that possibly you might be in this and I'm gonna call it reality, and you won't even know it. So we're not gonna know why or how, but we're gonna be able to synthetically possibly create it, and it lives inside, again, the brain. Does that answer your question? Yes, Okay, you can have a seat. Yeah. Let's get another one. Did I get your number right? Yes. Okay, uh, I'm getting an M name, it's a Mark or Mar, Mar I'm getting, it ends with a Y, Marty, and I'm gonna go with the number nine. I know you, but we didn't talk about anything, okay. Um, the answer to your question is, this is a tough one, okay? Because I don't want to say you are going to die, <laughs> but you will, okay? <laughs> it's, I, I, I sense that you're a type of person who takes care of your body, you're active, and um, your brain is going to be strong, your body is going to be strong for a long period of time, and your body is going to be right there with it, and I don't have any concern about any kind of like health issues or anything like that. I, I get the feeling you're making a lot of really good life choices. So, I'm not going to give you a date that you're going to die. <laughs> okay. Let's do one more. I'm getting a D name. Um, uh, D-I-C-K-E-N uh, number three. Does that mean Dickin or Dickens? Is there a, a Dickens number three? X. Dixon. Got it. Number three. Number three. Okay. I want to be really, really clear with you because I do cross over sometimes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is absolutely yes because it, it would be really rude of us to think that we were it. They're smarter than us, okay? So they're not going to contact us until we're ready. So the answer is absolutely yes. And I'm not talking about your neighbors, okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay, we'll stop there. Oh, I promised, I promised, uh, oh, I promised you, Ed. Um, you're thinking of a number, yes? It's deafening now. Okay, I've been drawing for a little while up here, and I want to share what I've been scribbling. Your number that you've been thinking of is 43. Pretty close. <laughs> okay, what was your number? 42. 42, I was off by one. Okay, the universe works in mysterious ways. Sometimes you just have to lean into it and have faith, okay? Don't question everything, because check this out. Sometimes when you think you're run off, you're actually in exactly the right place, and I'll show you what I mean with this.
13 plus 10 is 23, 23 plus 7 is 30, 30 plus 12 is your number 42. That's the top row, second row. 8 plus 11 is 19 plus 14, and 9 is the number you were thinking of 42, second row. 10 plus 5 is 15, 27 plus 15 is 42, 11 plus 16 is 27, plus 6 is 33, plus 9 is your number 42, but wait, there's more. 13 plus 8 is 21, plus uh, 10 is four, uh, 31, plus 11 is your number 42, uh, 21, 26, 16 is 42, 21, 33 plus 9 is 42, those add up to 42. <laughs> Do you see it? In life, in the world, there's a lot of things you can't see. That doesn't mean it's not there. Check this out. The diagonal adds up to your number 42. The other diagonal adds up to the number 42. Do we stop there? No. The four corners of the world will add up to your number 42. Are you doing the math? You just trust me at this point. The inside four add up to your number 42. These four up to 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42. There are exactly 42 different ways that these numbers add up to 42, but one great way to learn here today at Skeptical. Thank you. I'd like to borrow, I get the sense that someone in this room has an iPhone. <laughs> I'd like to borrow an iPhone, I will take great care of it. <coughs> Who's got an iPhone? You got one, sir? What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to unlock it and hand it to me, I will not look at your fingerprint. <laughs> an unlocked iPhone, thank you, sir. What do you do for a living? Stay here. Software engineer. Software engineer. Uh, what's the, how many software engineers does it take to screw the light bulb? Hardware problem. <laughs> What's the difference between an introverted software engineer and an extroverted software engineer? The extroverted software engineer looks at your shoes when he's talking to you. Boom! <laughs> okay, so I just went to the secret panel where I grab your calculator. There is no number in it, but I've been cleared out just to be sure. I'm gonna ask you in the first row, um, if it's not too personal, what's the month and day you were born? <laughs> December 12th. December 12th, so that's 12, 12. I'm gonna zero it out 12. 12 times, oh, uh, Red, month and day you were born? Uh, the month and day, October 15th. Okay, so that's 10, 1, 5, yeah? Times. I'm going to ask you, please, take the phone in your hand. I want you to put in a four digit number, something that's personal to you. Put in the last four digits of your social security number. What could go wrong? <laughs> Once you've done that, hit equals. Check this out. In my pocket is a prediction. This prediction has been here since the day before the day started. Did you hit equals? You have a big number in front of you, you have a big number in front of me. Mine starts with nine. What does yours start with? Six. Mine was upside down, right. <laughs> nice and loud, what's the next number? Six. Go on. Five, two, four, four. <laughs> <laughs> or give it back. I'd like to borrow one more thing before I close the show. Uh, I'd like to borrow, and I'll take great care of it, a $100 bill. A $100 bill. Got one excellent. Would you come up on stage? A big round of applause for Dixon, is that correct? Dixon, watch your step, okay? Come on up on stage, Dixon. I trust you on this. Mistake number one. <laughs> Dixon, what do you do for a living? Uh, job hunt. <laughs> You're on a job hunt. What's, what's your, what, is you, what are you looking for? What job market? Uh, human services is what I usually work in. The human services, I like human resource, same? Or is that uh, different? No, more like mental health and things like that. Okay, mental health. And uh, what, what's the job title of the person that would hire you? Uh, human resources. Okay, so a human resource manager, if you are one or if you know one, please see Dixon immediately after the show and say hi, shake your hands. He's coming up here risking $100 and he's on a job. I'll take the magic marker, write Dixon nice and big on Benjamin Franklin's face. I'm gonna show the audience I have no other $10 bills in my hand. <laughs> 10, wait a minute. Excellent, what you've done is you've just uh, written your name on a $100 bill uh, to recap. Thank you, nicely done. Your job is to keep your eyes on the money. Look where the money is, don't look where the money isn't. I may try to trick you or fool you, slight of, direct, slight of uh, hand, misdirection, all that. Uh, watch closely, I fold the $100 bill in half. I fold it in half again. Actually, open it up and confirm it does have your signature because I remember I one more thing. One more thing, make sure that still has your signature on it. It's there. It's your handwriting, excellent. I have here. <laughs> it is a from. And what does he do for a living? Nothing. He's a time lord. And what does the TARDIS allow Doctor Who to do? Travel through time and space. 
This is an actual replica off of eBay. It's, um, it's the actual dimensions of his, but of course smaller. Well, I mean, it's bigger on the inside, but. <laughs> um, are you, who's the Doctor Who fan? I see hands, I was looking for someone kind of in the front row. Was that you, the lady right here? Would you guard the TARDIS? Notice there's a bank. There's a keyhole there, it's currently locked and sealed. You can't get into it from the outside unless you have the key. You can have a seat. I have something else in my briefcase. I'm sure you'll recognize it. It is a DeLorean. <laughs> from? I said, who said that really? Was that you? Excellent. Uh, there is a key, and it goes to some TARDIS bank, possibly. Would you guard the DeLorean? Excellent. I sit down. Okay, now back to the $100 bill. Thank you, sir. I'm going to, again, confirm that is your handwriting. Indeed. Okay, there's no way I could have copied that That's or switched it. Know. Excellent. Watch, Dixon. I fold in half. Keep your eyes where the money isn't. Don't look where the. Look. Keep your eyes where the money is. Don't look where the money isn't. Words. <laughs> It's clearly in my right hand. Okay. Empty left hand goes into the briefcase. I'm going to grab a peel and stick envelope. I place the $100 bill into the corner of the peel and stick envelope. Then I peel and I stick. I wrinkle the envelope. The wrinkling is very important, Dixon, because I have two identical envelopes that have no money in it. The game is called Find Your Money. <laughs> I give the envelopes a little shuffle. <laughs> Please point to an envelope that does not have the money in it. I hope you're right. I also travel with a portable paper shredder. <laughs> I think Dix is gonna pay very close attention now. <laughs> Two envelopes left. Oh, not there. <laughs> Fool me white shame on me. Fool me twice, circumcision. <laughs> Two envelopes left, Dixon. I give it a little shuffle. Is that your money on the ground? <laughs> I don't even know which one it is. Okay, Dixon, please point to an envelope that does not have your money in it. Uh, I hope you're right. <laughs> we shred that envelope. Uh, Open up that envelope, take out your $100 bill, confirm it has your signature, and then we will do something amazing. Who got stuck? <laughs> That's never a good sign. There's nothing in here. What? <laughs> oh, crap. Um, uh, let me check. Put it in the corner. We say the magic words. I am sorry. <laughs> and we, I'm sorry as you <laughs> We try again, take out another $100 bill. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what are we supposed to do with those tokens? We can for the parking, we'll figure that out later. Okay, uh, well, thank you for trying. <laughs> All those numbers add up to 42, that worked. <laughs> we can have a seat now, thank you. You're not leaving, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't fuck with an out-of-work guy and his money. <laughs> Don't you wish you just had a time machine and go back and... Hi. Uh, yes. Tardis, stand up. DeLorean, stand up. We need 1.21 gigawatts. <laughs> or is it gigawatts? Gigawatts, thank you. It's been a while since I watched the movie. I think they just had the big anniversary too, right? October. October. Oh, it's coming up? It was. Oh, it was. Okay, thank you. Well, you guys are geekier than me. I love it. <laughs> um, place the uh, key towards the TARDIS. TARDIS, place the key. Oh, this sounds so sexual. Um, place the keyhole towards the TARDIS. Unlock that bank. They're going to open up the top kind of like a treasure chest. You reach in, grab the, uh, the money bag that's in there by the string, pull it out, and pull out the uh, $100 bill that has your signature in it. I never went near the TARDIS. There you go. Oh, thank you. Both of you. A big round of applause for my TARDIS and DeLorean people. Thank you, that would have been cool. <laughs> Wait, it's not in there? Well, they don't make those anymore. You can sell them on eBay for about a hundred bucks. <laughs> Never go bad. <laughs> this will be the last Twinkie you ever get. Oh, <laughs> Wait, slow down, cowboy. Um, you know what's inside Twinkies? I hope hundred dollar bill. I was going to say cream filling, but we'll try. Um, <laughs> take one and open it up, not too much. Ladies and gentlemen, baked inside a sealed, sealed Twinkie, is one little green piece of paper that is a hundred dollar bill. Oh, I got it everywhere. Would you grab the rest of that out? Ew. Ew. <laughs> I use Twinkies because I don't want to waste food. <laughs> that was 
about a nickel's worth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is a hundred dollar bill, yes? It is. Is there one name on it? Is that your handwriting? Yeah. It is. <laughs> Dixon, everybody! a privilege to perform here and for one reason that you don't know about I am going to indulge myself by taking 90 seconds more of your time to tell you about something I am working on I've been a magician since I was 12 years old and in those 30 years I didn't know something but I just found out about a month ago that I'm related to Sidney Radner Sidney Radner was Hardeen's protege Hardeen was Houdini's younger brother Hardeen and Houdini did not have any kids so when Houdini died he willed everything to my distant relative. So I connected with his son, Bill Radner, who for 90 years has been doing the official Houdini seance. He's in Holyoke, Massachusetts, and asked me if I would like to bring it to San Francisco. Well, I'm a skeptic, maybe producing a seance, that's a challenge. <laughs> so I thought about it, we're 2015, San Francisco is the, the hotbed of science, technology, and innovation. Why not turn it on its head, do a reboot, and do a seance that I would be proud of and that all of you skeptics would be proud of. So I'm looking for two things. If you'd like to know more about this seance that's gonna probably take place, it's gonna take place on Halloween, probably at the old um, uh, Palace of Fine Arts building where the, uh, I'm sorry, the old Exploratorium. Uh, they, it's a great location that Houdini may have performed in. It's the only building still standing from the Pan Pacific International Exposition, so we should be able to channel them if we're in the right place. I mean, logically, yeah. Um, <laughs> And so if you'd like to know more about this event, please email me at strongrobert at gmail.com. If you have a special technology, innovation, or science that could be integrated into the seance, so that maybe we have a 3D hologram of him, or a virtual reality, or an augmented reality of Houdini, and he does make a technological appearance, please also email me or come up and say hi, strongrobert at gmail.com. For the next five months, that's gonna be my life. I'll be producing that. Thanks for indulging me for an extra 90 seconds. My name's Robert Strong. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you.